City Council of Detroit, the Veter Military and Veterans Affairs Task Force. I am Scott Benson, I'm one of your co-chairs. We will be joined by Member McAllister, who's another co-chair, as and we will and Council President Brenda Jones will not be with us today. She's off doing some training. She sends her regards. But let's do our usual opening and start with a pledge of allegiance and then introductions. And the flag is off to my left. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, fantastic. Let's start with introductions and let's start and go clockwise. Manager at Michigan Better Fantastic, Ms. Winston. If you wouldn't mind using the microphone as well, please, because we're being televised today. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Janina Jacobs. I'm the president of the Metro Detroit Council of the Navy League of the United States. Also, I'll work with I broke the mic, how's that? <laughs> Thank you. Is that on a text? Testing, one, two, three, four, testing. Testing, testing. Testing. Okay. Well, should we just talk loud? Try it again. Okay, here we go, that's better. Uh, Janina Jacobs, president of the Metro Detroit Council for the chair of the golf outing for the uh, Freedom Centers at the airport, the military lunches, and um, work with a lot of different uh, organizations as well. Fisher House that will be coming to Detroit, Michigan. Is it working? Oh, Dr. Kamal Khalil, Mental Health Task Force, uh, uh, Office of Councilman Roy McAllister. Well, Arthur Jones. I've been in 15 years. All right. Thank you. Patricia Cole, I am the founder of the Women's Resource Center, and we have just sent nine women through uh, medicinal massage therapy, and we're going to have videos of that to show you what good has done and how it's made such a profound in their lives. We've also bought a two family, and we're going to be providing housing for women in the metropolitan Detroit area within the next four months. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Cole, we're going to need to get you to come and do a presentation soon. Just a heads up. Uh, Derek Cole, Detroit resident, uh, a win uh, organizer. Kareem Muhammad, representative from PCSI. Okay. Jim Simmerite, national director, Navy League. Edward Tuggle, Vietnam Veterans, and uh, the Triple Nickel Black Paratroopers. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. But we can be a little bit more informal. But I want to first thank the uh, task force and Linda and the support staff for uh, providing the information that I needed in order to be here today. And um, hopefully I'm able to provide uh, some good information about PCSI and what I do on their behalf. PCSI is a federal contractor who hires individuals with disability. 75% uh, of our work hours are completed by individuals with disability. And one of the reasons why I'm here is because I hire a lot of individuals, uh, not just from our community, but through the South, uh, Southeast Michigan area. Uh, we are, our contract site is the Detroit Arsenal. Um, because we are a federal contractor, that's primarily where we're based at. We're based at military uh, locations, hospitals, and so on. Um, we, uh, 
because we are obviously limited in the number of individuals that we can hire at our location, I do other things in the community to support the veteran population. Uh, one of those things is that I do uh, veteran boot camps, I assist with uh, resume writing, I assist uh, veterans that want to apply for positions on USA jobs, and I provide that type of information and that type of support. PCSI is a uh, state of Michigan certified veteran, veteran friendly uh, company. Uh, we are silver status, which means that uh, of the roughly 300 companies in the state of Michigan that employ veterans, we are in that top 10% group as it, when it comes to hiring veterans and working on behalf of veterans. Um, our company, while we have obviously a work site here in Michigan, is based out of uh, Texas. And what I normally do is I say, go to our website, take a look at some of the positions that we have open. Oftentimes there are individuals that may not have a problem relocating and, and that type of thing. Um, so we're in 10 to 12 other states. We have roughly 1,600 employees. So we, again, are pretty aggressive at providing uh, employment opportunities for veterans, veterans with disability, and individuals with disability. Any questions? All right. <laughs> so at this time, we'll be fielding any questions we have for Mr. Muhammad. Any questions? Yes. Um, yes, Mr. Muhammad. Uh, are there any particular employment areas that you would like to see us focus on? Like, what are the areas that are specialized in, or does it just kind of run the gamut of, of people that you can find Janine, let me have one, put a pause on that one. We want to make sure we can get the microphone. We'll get the microphone to you for that question, please. And we'll bring it to you. Thank you. Mr. Muhammad, uh, can you tell me with your, um, your company, is there any particular job area or jobs that you need people to, to fill or that your people are looking to seek? Because out in the um, business area, I work with a lot of different businesses and a lot of us are always looking for employees. Okay, that's a good question. Um, there, there's two answers actually to that question. One is as a company, PCSI, uh, we generally, because we do facility maintenance at the Detroit Arsenal, we primarily hire skilled trades. Now, we do have positions, uh, grounds positions, where we will take someone in that may not have a lot of experience, but it's an opportunity to get into the company. So if that person is mechanical, because they obviously have to be able to operate a, a C turn or a zero turn uh, lawnmower, uh, be able to assist with snow removal, which obviously in Michigan is a big deal. Um, but I also work with other community partners. So they may be looking for drivers, they may be looking for um, individuals or veterans that can service them in other ways that I may not be able to. So along with, um, along with obviously trying to fill positions that are open with PCSI, I look for opportunities to assist other companies that, that um, indicate that they're veteran friendly. Yes, sir. I need a microphone for you, sir. Uh, I'm right up front. <laughs> okay, look, I'm disabled. I'm not trying to work. You got affordable housing? Who gonna hire me? I'm disabled. Who, sometimes my knees give out on me. I need affordable housing. I ain't trying to work. Okay. I've been um, working since I was 15 years old. I need affordable housing. Please, sir, help me out. I want to get out this right. program. I. Our, primarily, our primary focus is employment. Oh, okay. So um, 
there are other resources that are available to assist in that regard. Um, and obviously the task force would be able to provide that type of information. Sir, we'll work to get your information and Excuse me. discuss this with you afterwards. Excuse me, sir. If you go over to Wayne County Veterans Services, they will assist you with affordable housing. I said assist you with affordable housing. Now, if you go to the Housing Commission, they will help you move in and get some affordable housing. 30% uh, of all the construction made on housing has to go to low income and they do have veterans of a preference for uh, those new houses they're building too. So all you have to do is get in contact with one of them. That's Wayne County Veterans Services and the uh, Detroit Housing Commission. I got evicted twice in the last three years. Who gonna hire me? I mean, who will let me go to the house? I got evicted twice over some dumb stuff. You feel my situation? So, sir, what's your name again? Dwayne Partee. I got evicted twice in the so, last three Mr. years. So, Mr. Partee, we're not going to be able to solve all your problems right here, right now. So, as I said, we will discuss this offline with you and try to refer you to the proper resources to help you get to where you want to be, okay? Yes, sir. Okay. And it sounds like Mr. Tuttle will be able to help you. So, if you look at Mr. Tuttle right there, he's going to be able to help you after this. Yes, we sir. train uh, young kids to uh, work on aircraft mm. and a couple other things. Do you have anything in that specific field after these kids get trained? Uh, some of the veterans, uh, they go uh, from, you know, uh, up in age, some guys, and we train them how to uh, work on small aircraft. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is, is getting their foot in the door. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you have anything in that uh, field? Not, not at our site. Um, again, we are a federal contractor. Obviously, there are positions that may open at TACOM, which is the research and development for the military. So at that location, they do research and development there. There may, if they look at the USA Jobs um, site, there may be an opening for that type of mechanic. Um, as a community partner, there is uh, John Gartner, who is the uh, director of a VIP program, which is Veterans Initiative Program for Rush in Industries. And obviously, they hire mechanics. And I'm only looking at transferable skills. I don't know that much about airplane uh, uh, repair and that type of stuff. Is that the same John Gardner that, that attends these meetings all the time? Uh, I'm sure it probably is. Yeah. Yes. Do you have a phone number for him or anything? And information on him? I can give it to you after we're done. Thank you. First of all, I apologize for being late. I had a closed session. But Mr. Wilburn, are you familiar with Mr. Kenneth Rucker? He's part of that Global Aviation Association that deals, that works with uh, Aerosmith. And uh, are you familiar with him? Because he, he's involved with the youth and the people that you were just asking about. So if, you, if not, I can get you his information. Okay. okay. All right, then. Thank you. Are there any additional questions for Mr. Muhammad? Questions going once, questions going twice. All right. Mr. Muhammad, thank you very much. And so if you have any business cards, please give those to the uh, interested members of the, the task force. Thank you. All right. Next on our agenda is roundtable and special committee updates and discussions. How many committees do we have present today? One, Janina. All right, Janina, if you give us an update. Yes, a couple things. Um, first of all, I did bring some brochures for the golf outing that is supporting the, the uh, Freedom Centers. 
the Michigan Armed Forces Hospitality Centers. And if you've ever been to the airport and traveled, uh, they are the military lounges that assist all military veterans and their families as you go through the airport. So um, I've put a couple of them on the table, so we're always looking for golfers or sponsors or supporters or whatever you can do to help because those centers are primarily operated on a volunteer basis. And uh, just a, a quick note, you may have heard that through some clerical error, the uh, Freedom Center lost its 501c3 status. But the good news is, is we have already regained it. It was done in record time uh, through the efforts of former Senator Patrick Colbeck, and he was able to uh, get some buttons pushed, and we were able to get that status back. So if someone says we're not a 501c3 anymore, not true. We have regained that status, so that, that's one thing there. Secondly, um, I think I announced this at the last meeting, but I'll announce it again. Um, it's very, very possible that we will have some more LCS ships, just like the USS Detroit, coming through uh, the port later this year. And uh, there's a couple of them that are going to be commissioned later this year. And so Detroit is becoming a popular stop-off spot. So uh, when that happens, I will let this group know because we would be um, available to allow some tours of the ship, private tours of that ship, in case you didn't get one when the USS Detroit was here before. So that's uh, good news as, as far as that goes. Uh, the other thing, and I, I don't know if, if all of you know this, but um, the Fisher House in Ann Arbor is having a groundbreaking ceremony on Thursday at 10 o'clock in the morning at the VA in Ann Arbor. And of course, that precedes the work that we're doing on trying to bring a Fisher House to Detroit. So I'm involved with all of those groups and uh, hope to uh, keep you posted on all those things going on. Thank you. Thank you. All right, do we have any additional announcements? Any other subcommittees or committees here? Any other committees? Mr. Tuttle, okay. Brief pause. Well, to start off with, first of all, I want to let you know that on the 22nd of this month, which is a Saturday, there will be the Kids Fishing Derby at Palmer Park. Kids Fishing Derby at Palmer Park, there's two sessions. There's, the first one starts at 9 and the second session starts at 12.30. This is for the kids from six years up all the way up to 16 years old. We put 15,000 bluegills in the water at Palmer Park, give the kids real fishing rods and poles that we have for them to go out and do some real fishing. And if you ever seen a nine-year-old catch a fish, for the first time in their life, you're missing something. The smile on their face will make it all worth it to you. Next, with the Vietnam Veterans Chapter 9, we want to say we're working on more grants to start passing out within the community uh, with the children and with some of the companies. As you know, I also assist and work along with my friend here, Mr. Jim, who we are the uh, Broadhead Association. We are trying to get the Broadhead Armory back open for the community. We're working hard at that. We've cleaned it up. Right now we're doing little things, and I'll let Jim tell you about it, that we're going to continue, be, continue doing over there. So we will be needing your help and support in doing that to reopen the Broadhead Armory. The parade that's gonna be taking place in November, which we also help with, <clears throat> we're doing some serious, serious thinking on some things, so it's taking us a little bit of time to tell you the route that we're gonna be using. We're looking at Woodward, and we're also looking at Michigan Avenue this year of going down to do the parade on. We thought about Jefferson. We did Jefferson before, so we're gonna lay off that. And it's either gonna be on Woodward or Michigan Avenue. I would say look at more Michigan Avenue for this year's 
Veterans Day Parade. And we'll be looking toward our beautiful Linda over here to let us know in reference to Damon Keith, because this is the Veterans Day Parade in honor of Damon Keith. And that's all I have to report. All right, thank you. I am uh, Jim Semerad, uh, Commander, U.S. Navy, retired, second one through. It's, okay. it's on. So anyway, you passed me the mic, so I thought I'd add a, a couple comments. I uh, wanted to thank everybody that participated in the uh, Memorial Day event on May 25th at Broadhead Armory. The, the real concept and idea was the uh, idea of Malia Howard, who is the fifth district community development manager. And she originally thought about cleaning up the, around the Broadhead area to get it a little bit nicer looking before, as you go on to Belle Isle. And so we uh, kind of rallied around that date, Memorial Day. We said that'd be a nice thing to do um, in front of Broadhead. We haven't seen a flag up in front of that building in 15 years. And um, uh, people were coming from all over the place to assist and clean up. So today, you won't find any garbage around the building. All of that's been picked up. And uh, the city has uh, decided to go ahead and, and cut the grass now that they don't have to be concerned about bottles and rocks and things like that. But uh, it was a very nice event. And uh, we had a lot of participation of people coming out uh, the weeks previously to uh, clean up all around Broadhead. And it looks a lot prettier now. Somebody even came at, back, this is really interesting, um, literally climbed up the flagpole and said, I think I can fix this. And so he climbed back down. I don't know how you do that, but he did it without any assistance and he climbed back up and then painted it and put all new lines in it. And so it enabled it to become, for us to put a flag up there now and it's still flying. But uh, we intend to take uh, the Memorial Day sign down. Uh, I'm not sure what we'll do going forward other than just to kind of make sure it keeps, uh, it looks nice um, as you drive by and it's not uh, uh, one of the, uh, an eyesore for, for everybody there. And it also had some side benefits too that I want to, uh, that are notable. One is um, Ben Carson has an NJROTC, Navy, junior ROTC program. And they were looking for some activities to get engaged and involved in. And this got them out of their building and gave them a community service project that uh, now hopefully they'll get awards for their community service. So it had a residual benefit there, um, which we're uh, pretty excited about. And then um, uh, the other thing was we learned in that process that the buildings adjacent, I guess you call it east of Broadhead, actually kind of north, as you're going away from the city, uh, all those buildings were former army barracks uh, during World War II. And everybody just looks at them and just says, okay, this is a, kind of an old, old building. But it actually used to house uh, active duty army people in those buildings as they were training and preparing for World War II, uh, both at uh, Historic Fort Wayne and at Broadhead. And then finally, we did get a chance to go out to Historic Fort Wayne and look at all the artifacts from the former Broadhead building. And there was about, there's not very many, there's probably maybe 15, but we took pictures of them and we uh, just kind of uh, got a better understanding of uh, what is there from the Historic Broadhead building. That's all, thank you. Thank you. All right. A couple of weeks ago, a couple of things happened. We had uh, the honoring of two other uh, Tusky Airmen. That was the first, the first and only black Top Gun. I don't know if a lot of people know about this. They won in 1949 out to Vegas, uh, out to Nellis Air Force Base in Vegas. Well, the reason we had this, two of the guys are still living, Harry Stewart and James Harvey. Harry Stewart lives here. Uh, but to make the story short, when they won this, there was the only black team in the whole thing. 
with all the military. But when the trophy came, to, 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 when it came time to present the trophy, it mysteriously disappeared. And it disappeared for 50 years before we found it. But uh, we got it back now. But the thing that was really hurt is two of the guys had died in the meantime. They weren't able to see this trophy. Uh, one other thing, we also, at the Wright Museum, we had a play called Black Angels Over Tuskegee. This lady that lives abroad in here, she didn't really do a lot of advertising, so a lot of people didn't show up. We had about 250 people there. And this was a, it was an excellent play. Now, she's going to bring it back here. We're trying to get her back, bring it back here and have it more than just one day. The last time we had it one day. It was a matinee, which kind of threw things off. We want to bring it back here for three or four days everybody, so everybody can see this. It's a story from top, from start to finish, the Tusky Airmen. So it's a good play, and uh, we all show up, myself, uh, Colonel Jefferson, Colonel Stewart, and the rest of the guys showed up for the play. And we had uh, quite a few of the airmen down there and their families. That's what made it so good. Uh, Kim Tanya, I don't know if everybody knows who Kim Tanya is, but she had an uncle or something that was a former airman. Coleman Young was a former airman, so forth. But we do have a, a couple of things going on in the summer. Uh, Will Run in August is going to have the air show in August. It's going to be three days. Next year, Severn's not going to have an air show this year. They'll have one next year. So they're going to have the, it's either Blue Angels or Thunderbirds is going to be out next year, and it's going to be in August. And also in August this year, we have our annual fundraiser, which is a cruise on Lake St. Clair. That's on August 18th. And if anybody wants tickets, they can see me if you want to want tickets. That's about it. All right. All right, thank you. And so next we're going to have an update from the Veterans Administration Medical Center by Dr. Joy Ennis Johnson. Hi, good afternoon. How are you? Good afternoon. Good, good. Well, I'm, one of, I'm the CWT manager, the Compensated Work Therapy um, Program Manager at the Veterans Administration at 4646 John R. And our goal is, and uh, we are very passionate about, is serving our veterans with significant um, disabilities. We assist our veterans in moving towards competitive employment, veterans who have any type of disability, so the disability does not have to be um, commissioned, what we call service connection. So if you have any um, mental health diagnosis, any physical um, diagnosis, we would assist um, our veteran in having a work experience at the Veterans Administration um, here in Detroit. And we have a variety of assignments um, that we design for our veterans. Anything from janitorial to logistics, um, to food service, to grounds. They have an opportunity to participate in the, the, that paid work experience. So we pay about minimum wage, and veterans have an opportunity to work from uh, 25 hours to 40 hours to assess work tolerance or work stamina. Um, sometimes our veterans may think, well, can I work again? I got injured while I was in the military. You know, what can I do? And this is a program that's designed for a veteran to, you know, have a journey, a, a guidance on what's the new career um, can be. We also contract with employers in the community. Um, sometimes our employers will say, well, I cannot find veterans. I have a hundred of them. So who are job ready and willing and want to engage in competitive employment? One of the partnerships that we have is with PCSI, Mr. Kareem. So he came to us and you know, wanted to obtain you know, veterans, meet veterans with significant disabilities. And I think majority of your staff came from us. One of the things we do with um, Kareem, we would assess what's the functional limitation. So if that veteran require um, extra breaks or 
um, need modifications to the equipment to maintain success at work, we will assist that employer in helping the veteran to be successful at work. And it has been um, successful. Our partnership uh, have beyond, extend beyond over um, two years. And it's always great to see our veterans in the community working successfully. Okay, so thank you. All right. Do we have any questions for the doctor? Any questions? All right. Any additional updates from anybody? With no additional updates, we will go into... Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. I've been coming to these meetings for a while. Um, when President Obama started sending veterans home, um, I have a, an organization that started 27 years ago called the Women's Informal Network. And we started it because we know that women work very hard in the community and often are overlooked for what they do. So it's kind of our thank you. We do it every m March in conjunction with Women's History Month. So when the president start, uh, that president started sending women home, um, a veteran's home, I just kind of looked into how many of those veterans were women and found out that over 13,000 women were in Wayne County, that women veterans. And so I started talking to them and finding out what it was that they needed. And one of the things is they don't even want you to know they were in the service. That was the first thing that just blew my mind. And I know you know that already. Um, on November the 1st, 2014, the Volunteers of America did a program out in Dearborn, and 100 veterans showed up, 100 women veterans showed up. I didn't even know there were 100 women veterans in the whole country, not really, but I was just surprised. And the stories that they told, every woman, every person in the room was crying. The stories were so horrible. So if I thought they were being, we were being mistreated on the job, they, we were treated worse in the service. So I decided to start something to make their lives better, and it's called the Women's Veterans Resource Center. We will open our office in September. But what we've been doing is I have found a woman that is vetted by the federal government to do massage, and so she's been working with some of these women. We have sent nine women through the program, and they feel better afterwards. They get massages for six, for six weeks, each one of them, and um, they, we've done a video on them before and after and what the massages have meant to them. So I've also a, bought a two-family, and because I found out there's a housing issue, uh, I didn't know that. You know, when, when, you're, when you don't know, you don't know. And it's interesting because I have a niece that was in the service for 20 years, and I don't know why I didn't ask her. I just forgot because she's been out a while, and she, you know, she works for the federal government now. But, but she started telling me stuff that she'd been through, and I said, you know, I could have asked you in the first place. So anyway, she's going to be on my council now. So um, by September, I'm going to invite all of you to our new office, uh, which is downtown Detroit. So you can come and see what we're going to do, and some of the lady veterans will be there. So just thank you. I thank Brenda and her staff for doing this because uh, I've learned a lot and met a lot of good people that can help me do what I'm trying to do, including Mr. Tuggle and, and, and a lot of the people in the room that I've talked to before. So just thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Ms. Cook, thank you so much for that. Ms. Cook, what is there any reason as to why they say that they did not want to be identified as they were treated like crap? Mm. Okay. And that's my cleanup word. Yes, ma'am. Uh, they were treated very poorly. This, a young lady, um, she must have been about 24, 25, she stood up to tell the story of she was gang raped. Four guys, they, 10 of them put a circle around her, and four of them gang raped her in the middle of the circle so nobody would know what was going on. She had everybody in the room crying. Nobody didn't cry because they couldn't even imagine what they're like. And when she got up off the ground, when they finally let her up, maybe 30, 45 minutes later, she went to the commanding officer, and he said to her, and I think this is what took me over the edge, what did you think when you, you were going to get when you joined the Army? Wow. Thank if you. I may. Thank you. Um, if I may, um, Ms. Patco, I've been working with Ms. Patco for a while now. And I've been sending all of my lady veterans to her. And the reason being, uh, as past director of Veterans Affairs, I've had a chance to talk to some of these female veterans. Some of the stories they will tell you is heartbreaking. It will make you cry. It will make you really at the American soldier. 
based on what they have been through. They do not like to talk about it. They do not like to even come around or go around veterans organizations for fear that some of the things they went through while in the military, they might have to go through again while they out. So I sent all my female veterans to Ms. Padco for that reason alone. And if you see a female veteran, take your time. Let them talk to you. Help them. That's why I tell everyone today, go and find some housing for female veterans, not male veterans, female veterans. They need more help than the male veterans right now and more understanding. And I've just got that from female veterans that honored me in talking to me about it. Ms. Ms. Cole, Ms. Ms. Tuggle, um, thank you for that. And I just want to kind of like say, um, we had, and, and I'm going to ask if I have time, uh, Member Benson, I'm going to ask Dr. Khalil to talk about uh, some things that we're doing. But we had a uh, mental health uh, roundtable here. And it did not come to my attention, and that's why I asked Ms. Cole why. It did not come to my attention. Some of the, the women that came here for that mental health were offended. And I said, well, why? Because it is for men. It is for men. This, this facility is for men. There's no facilities for women here. So. Um, a small number, because she's very successful in her business, a small number of hours per month to talk to these women. They don't, they don't feel there's anybody they can talk to. They feel that if they talk to somebody, they're not listening so they can get any help. And so she has agreed to do this for us. So we should be up and running. We're waiting on our office to get ready. It's, ready to, it's downtown over on Griswold. Um, and I'm excited about it. I'm also afraid uh, because um, we want to help them. But I, I've got the feeling just from talking to the people that I've talked to that some of them are in pretty bad shape mentally. So I'm going to be talking to you about the mental health service you provide and then make, maybe the psychologists that we're hiring will be able to work with you as well. I'll be more than happy to. Thank um, you. So thank you. I see we had a little bit extra time. I wanted to um, uh, mentioned something here on behalf of um, Robert Middleton. And he's, uh, there's a little flyer in the, the packet here that each of you received that's at the front table. And uh, Robert is a distinguished in individual. He is recognized nationally uh, for his work um, and in promoting the Montford Point Marines. Uh, similar to the Tuskegee Airmen, the Montford Point Marines, for those that aren't aware, Montford Point was at, uh, adjacent to Paris Island. So if you were a Marine and you were of color, you did not go through the regular Marine camp. They sent you to Montford Point. So all the Afri primarily African-American type um, served in World War II, but if you were a Marine, you went to Montford Point. So they have uh, continued that legacy of uh, recognizing all African-American Marines. They have their banquet. It's on, um, again, it's in here on the flyer. It's, it's a wonderful event. June 23rd, it's um, uh, a Sunday, and it's right at the Burton Manor Conference and Banquet Center on Schoolcraft Road in Livonia. And you really should attend. I've attended this event, and it's an amazing, amazing tribute to um, a lot of individuals um, and a, lot, a wide variety of groups participate in it. And uh, he, if he were here, I'm sure he would uh, make that announcement. And so I felt it necessary to do it on his behalf. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Uh, is Robert Middleton. Somebody over here? I was just asking. I don't need that. Are there any additional updates? With that, we'll go to member reports. Member McAllister. Thank you, thank you, member. I'm gonna see my time to Dr. Khalil and let him give a little bit about the, some of the things that we're doing with the mental health 
uh, and specifically uh, with our veterans. Good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> so Councilman McAllister last year initiated the mental health task force, and I don't think he knew what he was getting himself into because every single time he thinks he solved a problem, three more pop up. Um, one being the role of our female veterans. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of misnomers in regards to mental health, in regards to the quality of care that people provide, and I think that the veteran population has been overlooked for far too long and are continually overlooked. Um, during our task force meetings, we've developed uh, great relationships with the police force, other city council members, different cities, different cities within the United States and as well as in Canada, um, and we hope to at least pro provide some sort of dent within to the um, stigma of mental health and the opioid use. Um, we've done collaborative studies in regards to first responders, um, the SUD problem within local emergency rooms, uh, and we hope to continue this with uh, one in October in regards to a student-based mental health role. Um, over the Memorial Day weekend, um, I was at a few commemorations, and. Um, you realize that there is a problem, but you never realize the magnitude of what a veteran goes to goes through. Um, being in healthcare, you feel like you've seen everything, but then when you speak to a veteran, some of the horrific things that they've seen is actually too much for me, and I feel unqualified even speaking on them because I'll I, I won't do them any justice. Um, but we hope to continue to work with our veteran uh, community. It was very interesting when we had our meeting here last year. I mean, I was equally as confused to, I mean, shame on me for not recognizing that uh, when I think veteran, I always thought male. But there was a large contingency of women who were very aggressive and very emotional uh, in some of the con private conversation. I had them via email um, stating that we went through horrific things defending our nation. Um, for them to go overseas and defend their nation is actually unbelievable, leaving behind, a lot of them left behind their kids. But then to face the trauma they faced internally, uh, I don't think anybody can put into words. Um, I'm glad that I'm here because now I know of, of, of a resource. Um, but I think it's going to take a collaborative effort. Um, and it's going to be a, and it needs a constructive effort, not one of those things where we just come up here and speak. You know, I hope I, I don't put the gentleman up and my sister up on. Uh, uh, on, on stage here, and I don't want to put the spotlight on them, but since we're up here talking about us, you should challenge us. Don't let us, don't let our words go in vain. When you see an issue, feel free to contact anybody up, and I'm speaking for them now, unfortunately, but feel free to contact them. Challenge us. Demand that we do what is right. We can give you a valiant effort. Will we be successful each and every time? No, but I can guarantee you there will be effort provided to you, and we hope to provide the justice needed to our female veterans. Is it, is, it, is it the mic there for Mr. Toe? All right. And see the the peace peddlers. Do you want to have a? Uh, do you have a brief statement you want to say? Yeah. We need to uh, get your microphone. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Travis Peters. I'm a founder and director of uh, Project Peace Peddlers. Um, you're speaking of mental health. One of the things that the Peace Peddlers do, uh, we are joined with the Detroit Police Department's community li liaison right out of Chief James Craig's office. We're a volunteer bike patrol. We uh, received a grant for $19,000 and we purchased Trek bikes for ladies and men. And bicycling has been proven as a therapy for uh, people with PTSD. Bike riding helps alleviate symptoms of uh, uh, depression, anxiety, and other things associated with PTSD. Along with our Peace Peddlers program, it's a visible presence of public servitude. You volunteer, ride for a couple hours a, a day, in the evening, we meet up at each precinct in the city of Detroit, a group of veterans, men and women. We get together with the Detroit Police Department's bike patrol, and we help uh, improve on uh, uh, safe routes to and from school. We help with uh, the green light businesses. So we are non-criminal, uh, we don't report on any uh, violent crimes. 
It's just our visible presence. Um, we're looking for veterans. We're here. We have bikes sitting. We can't get veterans to ride. I, it's just confusing. Um, Councilman Benson, uh, he signed us into a charter where we're, we're aligned with the uh, Citizens Radio Patrol. So speaking to the mental health thing, we have a, a, a something in place for our veterans. They can come out. We're going to be kicking off at uh, June 15th, this Saturday, at uh, the showdown in Motown. That's a car and bike show provided by Chief James Craig's community liaison down on Atwater this Saturday. We're going to have a little table set up. We're looking for our veterans to come and sign up. The city of Detroit's volunteer requirement, the hours is just four hours a month. We're just asking you to ride a couple times a week. And we're here. So if you all know veterans who like, we ride Trek bikes, $800 bikes. For, uh, so if you'd like to come out, I have flyers. Get in touch with me, Councilman Benson. He, uh, we provide a visible presence to serve to for his events and things like that. So we're here and glad to continually serve our city like we did this great nation. Thank you all for the time and I apologize for my tardiness. I just got out of school. Thank you very oh, much. Thank you. Right. thank you. Do we have any additional announcements? Any, Mr. Tuttle. Since we, have, since we have brought it up, I want to see if the committee, the council itself, we can find, maybe with help through the hospital, a female veteran that can probably come in and sit on the committee to take care of our female veterans. And so we can put it out there, just like you said. They say, uh, task force, Wayne County T Veterans Task Force, they female veterans think, okay, that's about all men. That's why I'm saying if we can get a female veteran to sit on the council, okay. to they know a female veterans up here, they can go to. I think that'll help us out a lot. Okay. We'll provide a few names for you to sit on the task force. Okay. Yeah. I'm not a Thank female you. veteran, I'm a wife of a veteran, so I'll find a couple names for you. All right, doctor, thank you. All right, any additional announcements? Oh, there we have a microphone and we have one over here as well. Hello, good Hello. afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Wog. I am a spouse of a current veteran. My son is active also. I have a nephew and whatnot. Um, I'm a liaison for a Detroit Training Center. We're a vocational training school, and I just wanted to talk about our opportunities for veterans and also you know, resident Detroiters. Uh, we have funding through DESC, but also we have VA approved classes that they can use their post GI Bill or they can use VOC rehabs um, funding. Um, we have our VA approved classes, which include CDLA, blight removal, um, heavy equipment operator. We're currently working on our masonry program and our welding program to also receive that VA approved status. Uh, we're working with the state, getting that um, squared away. Um, we also have single classes that a lot of our veterans can come in and they can do, you know, forklift classes, aerial lift, um, things of that sort. We have OSHA 10, OSHA 30. So we just wanted to, you know, let it, let it be known that we offer those classes. We have rates for veterans. They can use the benefits that they have earned. And we're working more to see if we can find more available funding for veterans, such as federal tuition assistance. Uh, we're looking into that to see uh, what we need to do as a company to make sure those funding is also available. Um, so that's just, we're located here, just actually a couple blocks down on Lorraine Street. Um, so if you have any questions for me, <laughs> once again, my name's Jennifer. And uh, I've been a spouse for 25 years of a, of a soldier, so. <laughs> uh, Yes, um, you can contact myself, and that's 313-214, or 216-2104. 313-216-2104. And my name is Jennifer, and once again, we're Detroit Training Center. All right, thank you, Jennifer. Any additional questions for Jennifer? 
So we need to get you a microphone. And the reason we're asking you to speak into the microphone is that this is being recorded, and if you don't talk into the microphone, then it won't be transmitted and no one can hear you. Okay, sorry. So uh, I applaud you for helping to reacclimate our veterans with uh, great jobs. Mm -hmm. So w if you have a veteran who's technically advanced, but his or her disabilities, they can operate your equipment, they can run circles around it, and their disabilities don't allow them to work traditional hours. I was a UPS driver for 19 years until my disabilities began to not allow me to work. I'm technical, I can do those jobs. I was in an engineering battalion in Operation Desert Storm. But my disabilities won't allow me to uh, perform at heights, operate heavy machinery, or work a traditional daytime job because I have uh, developed narcolepsy. And it's just not just me. There are many veterans where they can do these type of jobs, but there's no accommodation set in place. Do you have accommodations set in place for veterans that meet those specific criteria? Because there are tons of them. Well, this is the thing, sir. We have classes that are held eight to four, and we have our evening program as well. A lot of times our veterans come in with a counselor, and we have certain questionnaires, and we have orientation that they come in, and they will ask simple questions. But typically with narcolepsy, that's probably not a good fit for a heavy equipment operator or a CDL driver. Um, unfortunately, you know, it's a heavy equipment. That's not a safe environment for those type of cases. But each case is a base-to-base, -base, you know, one-on-one -on -one person. They come in with their career counselor and they figure out what works best for them. Now, certain employers, I know they, they have, you know, um, accommodations for veterans, but us as a school, our priority is to teach and develop and um, if you do have certain criteria that you can't work, cert, you know, come to class during a certain time, it's unfortunately not gonna work because one of the key cores is you have to attend, you have to, you know, be, be positive, you have to be, you know, there, present, you know, and so, like, just attending class would be a huge thing. So if that's a deterrent or if somebody cannot do that, then it's probably not the best fit for them. So, you know, it's like I said, we have like a gains test that we have, you know, when they come in for orientation, they have to take a gains test, which is reading and math. Um, but if there are certain limitations like narcolepsy, I know that you should not be operating heavy equipment with that kind of problem. Well, we do have a diesel, we do have a diesel mechanic, you know, program that is actually a VA approved program. So, like I said, that's something that we would have to work with a counselor, a doctor, and you know, and move forward that way. But I know our job is to make sure that they have the proper technique. But not only that, we have to make sure that our students graduate, and we also have to make sure that they're placed. One of the key core components of our, our um, business is we work with employers. We have employer engagement. We have one-on-one -on -one, you know, relationships with these because we have to make sure that our students are placed that's part of our funding, which is, it would be awesome if the, the colleges and the universities had the same critique, but you know, we, or criteria, but we do have that and, and we look forward to that and we, we take pride in that, so. Do okay, you? so thank you for that, Jennifer. Okay, thank you. Uh, may I? All right. Is there another question for her? Oh. Okay. I'm so sorry. I know that this is a skilled uh, process where you teach people various traits. Do you do any volunteer work for veterans who are like, have homes that need to be repaired or sidewalks or stuff like that. Do you have any uh, skill field, skill areas that you teach where they can have some kind of experience on homes for veterans? Well, you know, not necessarily home for veterans. I know that's something that we could look into. I know we have a workshop workshops that we've had on the weekends, and one of them was carpentry. And I know that. Um, they, they built benches, and I know we've put benches in certain spots in Detroit to kind of like near the bus stops and things like that. Um, I know we work with Atlantic Impact, which is um, high school students that come in, and I know they had made some benches as well. So that would be something to look into. That's a great suggestion. Thank you very much. Uh, 
Uh, good afternoon. My name is Ron Madden. I'm here representing our uh, nonprofit, Demographic Against Race in Detroit. And uh, what we're all talking about, I have a little bit of connection with just about all of it. Uh, what our mission is, is uh, blight removal, rehab and vacant lots, as well as rehab and vacant structures that can be uh, uh, given to uh, veterans uh, for home ownership. Uh, one of the things I wanted to mention real quick is with DTC, Detroit Training Center, I graduated through some of the classes that they had as far as the uh, heavy equipment, uh, OSHA 10 and OSHA 30. So when we are out doing our projects and we bring the equipment, what I try to do is connect with people that want to have a little bit of familiarity with the equipment so we see where we go from there. And then from that, if they want to move forward with some things, um, I will connect them with Detroit Training Center, with the uh, Workforce Development Department, and continue with that. So we, we just, uh, just all around doing a lot of things. Uh, one of the things I wanted to bring up as far as our organization goes, on, um, I'm working with Arise Detroit, which has uh, connected me with VH1. We're gonna do a neighborhood um, revitalization project on June 21st in our neighborhood on uh, Fairfield Street between Finkel and the Lodge. VH1 is, uh, I guess the program is called VH1 Love. Uh, they want to come to Detroit and show, uh, film this uh, project and show, I guess, the rest of the world what Detroit is doing. So I have some flyers I'd like to give the people uh, that are interested. We're trying to get at least 100 volunteers to come out and uh, participate with this. Like I said, it'll be filmed by VH1. And they're going to have a large pizza truck and give away free pizza from Little Caesars. So I, that's one of their things there. So I'd uh, like to get, we'd like to see everybody here, there. Uh, and um, so that's pretty much my announcement um, that I wanted to make. June 21st, it'll be next week, Friday. And um, I got a lot of logistics stuff to pull together so we can make this happen. Anybody have any questions? Okay. All right then. Well, yes, Miss Miss Wesley. Hi everyone. I'm Linda Wesley from Council President Brenda Jones' office, and I just want to make mention of the event that Council President has coming up in July. So please mark your calendars for July 25th. This is the 10th annual Senior Citizen Informational Summit that Council President Brenda Jones is hosting. It will be held at the Irma Henderson Park that is on East Jefferson, right at the corner of Burns. We invite all of our veterans to come out. The only thing we do ask is for you to please register. So you may do that by calling 224-1253, or if you are internet savvy, and you want to do it uh, via email, you can do, you can uh, email Team Jones Events at DetroitMI.gov. So please, we want you to come out and have a great time. Uh, this is uh, a great time for you to receive information for our seniors from vendors that provide those types of services for uh, our seniors. We have a free raffle. You play bingo. You will be able to do some dancing. We serve a wonderful lunch to you. And you will, be see, you will get ice cream. And we're also giving away some free vegetables as well. So please, come out to Irma Henderson Park on July 25th from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. You're going to have a great time. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Miss Wesley. Thank you so much. Well, that's uh, that's it. We ran into this hour, and unless there is some additional, Mister, thank you so very much, Brandon. Thank you everyone for coming out. I appreciate it, and uh, we look forward to seeing you, God willing, next month. All right. All right then. Thank you.